It's a near lock that Roger Goodell will announce that the Jacksonville Jaguars will select Trevor Lawrence for the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. He's been labeled a generational quarterback and can't miss prospect. In the modern NFL history, there have been several quarterbacks to get that label. There was John Elway, which did not work out for the Baltimore Colts so much at that time, but certainly paid off for the Denver Broncos. Troy Aikman took his lumps early before raising three Lombardies with the Dallas Cowboys. Peyton Manning will go down as one of the all-time greats while winning Super Bowls for the Colts and the Broncos. Andrew Luck lived up to the billing but retired early without appearing in a Super Bowl. As for last year's number one overall pick in Joe Burrow, well, time will tell. For Lawrence, he has every quality a team would want in a quarterback. Accuracy, points, athleticism, toughness, work ethic, and most importantly, he's a winner. But can he potentially turn around a franchise without much postseason success? It's highly probable. That's a challenge he'll be happy to embrace. What's understood ain't got to be explained. Trevor Lawrence looking for some real estate in the greater Jacksonville area. I hear Ponte Vedra Beach is nice this time of year. The Clemson product expected by all to go number one to the Jags. Beyond that, more quarterback play. Zach Wilson will likely head to the New York Jets. And then at number three, Mac Jones possibly becoming a San Francisco 49. Only a few more mocks between us and the real thing. Let's welcome in our guy, CBS Sports Draft expert Ryan Wilson. Uh, Ryan, as we grow closer to draft day, little smoke screens start to pop up here and there. Uh, we've wrestled over the two through five with the general assumption that Trevor Lawrence's name is already written in Sharpie on the Jags card at one. Is there any reason to believe that that assumption could be wrong? No, no. I'm trying here's, here. Look, here's how, <laughs> here's how I'll put it, Joe. There's a better chance of me winning the Masters Part 3 next year. Better chance of you winning the <laughs> Masters next year. There's a better chance of Bryson DeChambeau being the starting quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next year. There's absolutely no way on God's green earth that uh, Trevor Lawrence isn't going to Jacksonville first overall. I, I just don't see it happening. And uh, I've been accused uh, of uh, uh, being overzealous in these mock drafts that I've done. Version 33 comes out Monday. Look out for that. And, and I get that. But under no circumstances in the last 11 and a half months have I had anything but Trevor Lawrence being the first overall pick. Yes, he was with the Jets early on in the football season because the Jets really stunk. They won a couple games. The Jaguars snuck in. And they were locked in to the number one overall pick. So the past 17 weeks, which is how long the, the, the Jaguars have had the number one pick, I've had Trevor Lawrence going there. It's not changing, Joe. Congratulations on your Masters victory if it does. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, I just suggest that maybe you mix it up this week just to watch the world burn or Twitter at that. Uh, <laughs> teams like the Jags going to look to overhaul their rosters with the battery of picks that they have in their pocket. For instance, uh, the Jets, three picks in their pocket as well in the first 34 selections. Two in the first round. How do you sp see them spending that capital there in the first round? Well, if Trevor Lawrence is 100%, it certainly feels like Zach Wilson now at number two to the Jets is 99.9%. .9%. Our Jonathan Jones reported as much last week. Pete Prisco echoed those sentiments. So that feels like the direction they're going. Also, further indication was the fact that they moved on from Sam Darnold, traded him to Carolina. So Zach Wilson appears to be all systems go. So what are you going to do after that? You're going to get him some help. Uh, they had those two first-round picks at the bottom of the first round. In my last mock draft, I had him taking running back Travis Etienne. Why not get him some help in the backfield? They're, they're slight at running back in terms of depth there. Travis Etienne is a special talent. We know he can run between the tackles, but he has a speed to run outside. He's also incredibly useful and talented as a pass catcher coming out of the backfield, which will make life easier for Zach Wilson in year one. In a system, let's be honest, uh, historically, at least in the last few years, the Jets haven't been a very good football team. It's not like he's landing with the Patriots or the Steelers or the Saints. This is a team that, that has a lot of work to do. Make it easy for your young quarterback, and by doing that, you could add someone like Travis Etienne in the backfield that takes a lot of pressure off a young, young QB. That'll be further telling of where the sentiment is in drafting running back, seeing where ETN goes with just a whole bunch of talent. Just a matter of uh, how much, how high that is of a pick teams want to spend on a running back. Then at number three, you know I'm going to continue to push you on this until we hear his name called. On a scale of Trevor Lawrence at one to Justin Fields at seven, how confident are you that it'll be Mac Jones at three? 
I think right now, Joe, I'm at about 65, 70%. And I'm at the point in the process where I'm starting to doubt what I, what I was hearing late in the football season, which was I was hearing from NFL teams uh, that they thought Mac Jones was a top 10 pick. So I said it at the time, and people sort of looked at me sideways and laughed and thought it was crazy. And then the 49ers traded up a few weeks ago to number three, and everyone sort of uh, was a little more attentive and paying attention to what they might do. And it feels like Mac Jones is going to be their guy. You hear reports from elsewhere uh, around the league that Mac Jones appears to be the target at number three. We'll see. We'll find out. This could be the greatest smoke screen uh, in recent memory. Maybe it's Justin Fields or, or Trey Lance. But, you know, I, I've been saying it for a while. Mac Jones does a lot of things that NFL teams like. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He knows where to go with the ball before the snap. He knows how to adjust if there's some changes on the defense as the play unfolds, and that's attractive to a lot of teams. There is no sort of projection about what he'll look like at the next level, and I say that knowing that Matt Jones only started 17 games. It's not like he was a four-year starter. He's not Kellen Mond, for example, out of Texas A&M, who played all four years there. He came in when Tua got hurt late last year with a hip injury, played in the bowl game, played pretty well, then had a fantastic season to the point that he outplayed Tua in his final year at Alabama compared to what Tua did on his way to being a top-five pick for the Dolphins. So uh, could he go there at three? It feels like it, but I don't want to you know, count my chickens before the hatch to sound like my grandmother. We'll see what happens. I don't hate the pick there. You could argue that maybe San Francisco gave up too much to get up there and get Mac Jones or even Justin Fields, who, is, who it ends up being. But I think Mac Jones is going to be a really good NFL player, even though uh, Twitter appears not to quite like him as much as I do. Yeah, I'm not sure general consensus is where John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan are putting their eggs uh, when they count. They're going to go with the guy that they want. Uh, we also had the Panthers circled at eight to dip their toe into the QB pool as well. But after the trade for Sam Darnold, that comes squarely into question. Could you still see Carolina drafting a young arm? And if not, which direction do they head? So I don't, Joe, and, and here's why, and this is why I also think that the 49ers are leaning towards Mac Jones, because as soon as that happened, we heard, we heard reports that the Falcons were interested in moving down from four, and there's no way that the Panthers were going to be able to trade with the Falcons anyway because they're in the same division to move up from eight. So once it sounded like the Falcons were moving down but not with the Panthers, and the Panthers decided to go in another direction because perhaps they wanted Mac Jones, who, by the way, was on the senior bowl where Matt Rule and that coaching staff coached, they decided to roll, their, roll the dice on Sam Darnold. I don't hate the move. I, I think it makes some sense to go with Sam Darnold here. So I don't think they're going to draft a quarterback to answer your first question. Where might they go if Sam Darnold is, is in the plans? When, and he clearly is because they traded for him. I gave him a wide receiver in Jalen Waddell out of Alabama, who is arguably the most dynamic player in this draft class. Is he better play-by-play play play than Devontae Smith, his teammate at Alabama? No, I don't think so. But I think his upside is such uh, that it makes it worth the gamble here at eight. And NFL teams, fair or not, will ding Devontae Smith for weighing 170 pound, pounds and being six foot one. That's unfair because he wasn't even hurt at Alabama, except the finger injury, which has nothing to do with how much he weighs. But I think Jalen Waddle comes in, four-down player, can return kicks, and adds an element to that offense that, that uh, Sam Darnold could certainly use to go along with what they have in Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, and, of course, Christian McCaffrey. A lot of teams trying to reroute their franchise through the draft and through this crazy free agency period. It's been in the offseason, but teams are also trying to mitigate risk here, and there are varying levels of knowns and unknowns with these commodities and we're talking about Trey Lance in this instance he might not be the low floor guy or high floor guy but he is a high ceiling guy teams like what he brings in the sense of athleticism and what he could be at the next level where do you see a match or, or, or a fit for Trey Lance so I think what's going to happen if I'm reading the tarot cards correctly the four quarterbacks are off the board uh, every one of those quarterbacks that we talked about, except for Trey Lance. And does he get to eight or nine? Uh, that's the question. If he gets to nine, does a team like the Denver Broncos want to take a flyer on him if they're not sold on Drew Locke? And Drew Locke has had an up and down two seasons, former second round pick. And the, the, the new regime in the front office may want to go in a different direction. If he gets past nine, perhaps there's a run. Uh, there's a, a group of, of teams that might be interested in trading up, like the, the, the New England Patriots, uh, your Chicago Bears, the Washington football team uh, reportedly loves Trey Lance, the Steelers and the Saints are also in the mix there at the bottom of round one. So I think it could be any number of five or six teams, but in this last mock draft, I had the Broncos saying, you know what? We have some really good offensive players, some really good young players. We need to surround them with a franchise quarterback. Is it going to be this year with Trey Lance? Maybe not. We'll give Drew Locke one more shot. If he plays well, we can trade him in the offseason. But we'll have Trey Lance there on the bench ready to go. This defense, Vic Fangio, can get the most out of that unit. And that gives you the best chance right now anyway to compete with the Chiefs team that doesn't appear to be dropping off anytime soon. There are issues with Trey Lance, and they all have to do with the lack of experience. 17 starts, just like Mac Jones. The difference is he was playing FCS in a run-heavy scheme, while Mac Jones averaged 
30 pass attempts a game. Trey Lance was about 16 or 17. So there's a lot of projection going on if you're an NFL team. Um, and being risk averse is what NFL teams are all about, but also taking flyers on quarterbacks has to out has to weigh that in, in terms of being the, the counterbalance. So we'll see what happens in the top ten. Right now, I think it makes some sense for the Broncos to consider it, but if they don't, Joe, there'll be a handful of other teams eager to move up and get Trey Lance. Well, in the case of my Bears, you could keep Trey Lance. Give me Vic Fangio back. I think that's all I'm looking for. <laughs> He's Ryan Wilson <laughs> breaking it all down here on CBS Sports HQ as we grow closer to drafting. For more draft breakdowns and all things NFL, be sure to download and subscribe to Pick 6 Podcast. You can also head over to CBSSports.com on Monday and check out Ryan Wilson's latest mock version 33 on the way. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.